What up my awesome viewers, this is Rio Gion here. We're gonna come take a look at the stuff that I done from 2020, mainly the keyboard stuff, make a tier list. And yeah, of course this is gonna be my personal take. If you feel like certain keyboards should be at a higher tier or a lower tier, comment down below. Let me know, kinda curious to find out what you guys think based on the stuff that I done so far in 2020. It's been one one hell of a year. All right, we're gonna start off with the CM Storm Devastator Three. This is definitely going to be a B tier because the membrane keyboard itself feels really good. It's very enjoyable to type. It's tactile. It's not super mushy. The mouse feels good. The mouse feels good enough where like I do enjoy using it. I do enjoy using the combo. Again, with combos, I always feel like it's better that you can just buy them separately. Like, buy the keyboard and mouse separately, but if you do have to buy a combo, this isn't really that bad to go with. And then, next stop, we're going to have the Cougar Vatar. This is definitely a D tier, because this does not feel good to type on. And it's a personal thing, because if you feel like it's better for you, that's great. Comment down below, let me know. But it's also not really fun. And the way how the keys are, it's just, it feels like I'm pushing against a table, like I'm trying to type on a wall. And I don't like that. But it has... A very good redeeming factor is that the lights look beautiful. Like if if you have 20 or 30 bucks and you want to set up like a light show, this keyboard's it. But in terms of the actual keyboardness, nah, it's probably not that good to be honest. Up next we have the Fanatic keyboard. This is definitely an A tier. The Cherry MX Brown feels so good to the touch. I remember using this keyboard and this is one of those keyboards that I sort sort of like go out of my way to find reasons to type on it because it feels really freaking good to the touch. And it is also RGB lighting. It's a TKL keyboard, so if you don't use a number pad, that's great. If you do use a number pad, either get a separate one or this keyboard is not right for you. But for me, this is definitely a material quality. Next up, we got the Hermes. E1A. This one is the one that it has the mecha membrane-ish kind of feel to it. It feels good. It feels better than the CM Devastator 3, but not A tier because I remember the mouse isn't the best and the mouse pad also isn't the best. So the rating as a combo even though the keyboard is better, everything else isn't. Maybe a C tier. Yeah, because if you're buying things off of a combo, you kind of want everything to be good enough. This one, the keyboard's great. Everything else isn't. So, you have that going for you. Then we have the Hermes. Uh, this one is the P2. This one is also an A tier because this one is the Optical Blue. Optical Blue is my new favorite switch that I found out in 2020 because it's a lighter blue switch. It has the clickiness that I love and it has the softness that I want because when it comes to like blue switches, a lot of them are very stiff and I'm the kind of people that wants a softer clicky blue and with the discovery of Optical Blue, this is like it, this this is heaven for me, and I love every single moment of it, and this this is just wonderful. It, it is a wonderful switch. Next up, we have the OMF. Yes, this one is a B tier. It has the red switches, which is great. It feels good to type. It's not the best red switch, and it also has RGB. And overall, for the money, I think this is around like 40 50 bucks from, from memory, just based off of memory. I think this is a very good value for money. But if you want a keyboard straight for typing and gaming, this is not it. 
Uh, maybe a C. Nah, nah. It it definitely deserved being on a B tier, because the mechanical keys feel good enough, and it's just fantastic for gaming, for typing not so much. So, kind of keep that in mind. And then we have the Inland OMK. This is the one with the optical blue switches, standard layout, USB pass through, dedicated media controls, like the whole nine yards. This, this is my daily driver. Not gonna lie, I'm gonna throw it out there. This is my daily driver, and I absolutely fell in love the moment when I started doing a box opening, because I came to this keyboard blind. And there's a list of things that I want, like USB pass through, dedicated media control, standard layout, and it has the optical blue soft clicky switch. I I could not ask for a better keyboard. And the only downside, I guess, to some is the software kind of sucks. There, there isn't as much layers or there isn't layers at all. And then there isn't that much effects. So it's one of those keyboards that you can mistakenly download a different software and it will register that software. Like with Red Dragon keyboards that I use, it will mistakenly register this keyboard as a Red Dragon because they all use the same chassis. So I think they all use like pretty similar software. So that's probably why it is what it is. But besides that, personally, with RGB keyboards, I always set a color or a pattern and I'm done. So it doesn't matter that much to me, but if you care for RGB and you care for layers and, and all that good lighting stuff, no, 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 this is, this is not it. This is totally not it for you. Next up, we got the K100 RGB. This is, without a doubt, an S-tier keyboard with a giant caveat. And a giant caveat is that you better have a boatload of money or have fat wallet or be rich AF because this is the kind of keyboard that gives you everything, but it demands everything. The price tag is 230 bucks. Um, Retail, so you can get it for less, but if you can, it's great. And it has everything. The soft, not clicky, linear optical switch feels so good to the touch, by the way. Better, I would say better than MX Speed. L standard layout, really good lighting effects, USB pass-through, Elgato Steam Deck implemented into the macros and double shot pbt and they fix the font so it looks more professional like everything that has been wrong with corsair is fixed here so everything that i ever wanted in a keyboard is here but just cost too much and that's why it's still an s tier but if there's like an SS tier and like just an S tier, this is like below that inland keyboard because price wise, personally, I could not afford this. But if you can, go for it. I mean, by all means, swing for the fences. <laughs> Up next, we got the Logitech G513. This one has the GK Blue. It feels good, it's not the best. And it has RGB, it's good, not the best. And everything about it is just good, not the best. But it's not good enough because I think this keyboard was like 80 to 100 bucks. So for that kind of money now, you can get a better board, which is why I feel like it's in a C rank because overall, Everything is good. It's an average keyboard. That's basically what it is. So I'm going to give it an average grade. Next is the q -Sun. This one, I'm going to put it straight to a D tier because it's a membrane keyboard. It costs, I think, 30 or 40 bucks. And with that kind of money, you can buy a mechanical keyboard. But the very good redeeming factor about this particular keyboard is that, to me, as like a StarCraft fan, you could say, I see this keyboard in a lot of PC bangs. This is one of those things that 
it's my bucket list keyboard that I just want to try out to find out. And yeah, it's it's great. It's not the best, but for the money, I feel like personally, 30, 40 bucks, you can do better than this. And overall, it's just a membrane keyboard. It's like a run-of-the-mill membrane keyboard that just happens to be in a bunch of PC bangs in South Korea. At least back then. I, I don't know about now because of COVID, so the products are closed. Up next, we got the Razer Black Widow TE. This one is solid B. Uh, standard layout. It has the soft-ish clicky switch, not like optical blue. And overall, good keyboard, good lighting effects, good layers. But the one downside is that for some reason, whenever I use it, I'll, I always have this sinking feeling that, you know, it's just not for me. But that's my list. I honestly feel like if you like TK TKL, you like... RGB, you like layers of lighting effects? This is it. Like, this is a really, really good keyboard for the money. I think it costs around like 80 to, 80 to 120. That's going to be the range that I'm, I'm going to put it at. And anywhere that you buy around that price, it's a good deal. The last keyboard, the Tesoro Durando. This is my office keyboard this is the keyboard that i bought to use in the office it's a good enough keyboard it's an average keyboard as mx brown it feels good it sounds nice it gets the job done but it has a lot of errors like mechanical keyboards in the long run will have problems such as this one where it's not a huge problem but it's just sometimes when i use the keyboard one of the letters just keep registering and I have to unplug the keyboard and replug it and then delete all of the presses that the keyboard makes. So I guess in the long run, you know how they say 50 million keystroke, 100 million keystroke, 10,000 billion keystrokes. At, at some point, there is going to be an error. And this happens to be it for this particular keyboard, which is why this is an average keyboard. But if you buy this thing brand new and you buy it on RGB with the MX Brown because they have the old batch of MX Brown. So like the good ones before they got all either too soft or too stiff. So this is a good keyboard. If you can find it new, hopefully use, you better watch out. Overall, this is my list. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, any comments down below. If you guys find one that should be above, one should be below. And yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, click the bell for more content. You guys stay awesome.